And good day, it's uh, Mike VA 3 mw from Flex Radio, and welcome to the QSO Today Expo. This is the September 2022 version, and I've got uh, Ken Wells here from uh, Flex Radio's support team. Ken has been with uh, on with us before. He's also been uh, working with uh, helping a whole ton of people for a long time. And Ken, can I put you on the spot? Can you remember how long... Uh, how long you've been here uh, at uh, Flex taking support calls? It's over a couple of years, isn't it? It's actually three years ago next week. That would be mid-August next week. And, yeah, August uh, 19th is my anniversary. I wanted to congratulate Ken on his excellent backdrop. Oh, wait, that's real. So, uh, yeah, that is real. <laughs> And uh, I wanted Ken to uh, talk about, uh, you, you know, when you want to reach out to support for help, and, and it's not just you know, flex radio support. It can be, it can be support on your phone or anything. And uh, so a bit on what happens on his side of the world. And I think that'll help you if you're struggling with a problem and uh, uh, any good support team, I urge you to deal with. Uh, if they don't answer your emails, don't waste your time. I guess then YouTube's the best choice, but a lot of companies have really great support teams. Uh, and most of the amateur ones do as well. So we're lucky to have Ken as well. Ken, you've uh, really quick, you've been a ham for how many centuries? Oh, golly. Almost 48 years now since 1974. When I was oh, we're the same. School. Yeah. 48 years at the same time. And I've seen uh, a lot of changes. Went from crystal controlled CW regs all the way to you know, software defined radios. Yep, and it was a cool, geeky thing to do when you were in high school because nobody else, there was only a couple dozen of you doing it, so. It's still a cool, geeky thing to do. <laughs> okay, that's true, too. And we don't depend on anybody else. So, uh, in the support world, uh, we we use a tool called um, Zendesk, pretty popular support tool. But uh, we'll have some fun with this at first. Thing. Okay, Ken, the uh, I prepped him earlier, but this isn't one of the questions, but Without naming any names, one of the most memorable support tickets you ever have. And by the way, we do have a short list of customers that we've classified a certain type of ticket. So hopefully you're not that person, but we, we won't <laughs> tell you who you are anyway. A couple of most interesting ones or the, the most frustrating ones are the ones that just, that just write in and all they say is, don't work, fix it. And give me absolutely no information whatsoever. That, that happens and, a lot, doesn't it? Oh, amazingly often, and I don't know whether they just can't figure out how to use the interface or whether they expect me to be clairvoyant uh, or something. It's just like, you know, talking to your spouse, you know, you got married, but that doesn't mean you can read their mind. Wait a minute. Don't you come from that side of the fence? Aren't you clairvoyant or did they not teach you that part? I am a retired <laughs> pastor, but I was gone the day they passed out the clairvoyant license. Okay. <laughs> This is no different. I just imagine you know, when you take your car in and you drove up in the car and you parked it and walked over and it says it's broke. Well, you know, got you here. Those are the things you think of out loud, right? So, yeah, it's anyway. like calling a car dealer and and not even telling him whether it's a Ford, a Chevy, or a Toyota right. uh, or what model it is. And so, you know, the best thing that people can do is give me information. And the more the better. better. The more information you give me, the faster I can deal with your issue. Right. And that's all anybody wants is some sort of resolution to a problem. Sure. Also, uh, Ken's got a page I'm going to pop up here. We actually have a ton of information available on the Flex Radio website. I'm going to pop it up, right? It is already here somewhere. There it is. And uh, it's called helpdesk.flexradio.com. And uh, Ken, tell us what we can find on this page. Okay, on this particular page of it is some general announcements, uh, information, for example, there are certain browsers that work with Help Desk and some of them that have problems because they limit uh, cookies and all those wonderful things. Here's how to access your uh, support ticket via the Help Desk uh, portal, and then how to submit a request for technical support. That's an important one. Uh, and then there's also, you know, if you go back to the main uh, Flex Radio, there's tabs on uh, how to uh, get information about the Flex Signature Series radios, about the uh, Flex Legacy stuff, uh, general information, miscellaneous stuff about computers. You can get lots, and you can see I'm scrolling through a bunch of stuff, a lot of different articles that you can actually help solve your own problems with. 
And uh, we love it when people do that because uh, one, when you solve it yourself, you're not going to forget the solution as easily as if I just go in and fix it for you. But if you have more problems and need some help, then of course we're wanting to help you. Um, you know, and that's where you go to the general tab and click on submit a request. You know, on um, one of the features of browsers, by the way, Ken, is you might well have mentioned something like using the Control F key on your PC keyboard, or the or the uh, what do they call it, the Apple F key on a Mac, or Command or Control. I forgot which one it is, but um, if you want to pop that up, say I wanted to know something about. Um, Type it. Well, how about the SD card? That's pretty popular. So we have okay. a couple of ways to search. Um, and we're going to talk about that because and these will be good to, tools you can use not only with our site, but we do have a built-in search engine. It's not bad, but uh, you can use that search engine. And then there's yeah. a way to search a screen, especially if you have a long pile yeah, of data. If you, so if you hit the control F, it'll pop up this little bitty thing here in the top. And you can put in there and I'll just say... You know what? It didn't pop up on the screen, but oh, it didn't pop so, up on the uh, shared screen. Okay, on the shared so if screen. You go to the search thing and say SD card, but you can find articles about uh, different uh, things. We'll just say, how about we go for Wi-Fi? I'm having a problem with my Wi-Fi, and or Smart Link is a good one too. Yeah, Wi-Fi. Here's reasons for wireless network performance problems, how to determine your Wi-Fi adapter speed. There's articles about uh, uh, Wi-Fi requirements for your maestro. Uh, you know what? Scroll link. down to the two. There's a really great one there. Uh, Tim wrote it, just the acrylic one. It's the second one from the top. Acrylic is a great Wi-Fi tool. I Ken, I don't know if you've used it. I've used it many times. But you would be surprised if you installed acrylic on your computer and and went and looked at what your what your Wi-Fi is actually seeing. Um, can you click? Did that open? Uh, let me see if there it opens. Yep. Yeah, and if you drag cool. down, just because we like pictures, like if you think your Wi-Fi is quiet, that happened to be my house, but it's not <laughs> quiet. <laughs> you know, those are neighbors, and they yeah. all impact the performance. Yeah, a lot of network problems actually are because you got too many devices from too many different houses all on the same channel. There's only three channels on the regular 2.4 gig uh, Wi-Fi, you know, 1, 6, and 11. All the others are overlapping the three main channels. And so you got to find a clear, a, the clearest channel. Better yet, use the 5 gig Wi-Fi five that gig. has a lot more real estate. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, um, and then... Um, so, so the, there's a whole number of white papers there that are just really quite useful. So give Absolutely. those a try. And we, we often actually provide those, I think, where we think it might help you. So we don't have to retype it all in again. Right. But, um, <laughs> uh, and if it doesn't. And I think one of the questions, can we'll ask this right in the beginning because I, we do get a lot of uh, requests for it. Uh, why can't I pick up the phone and call you? Yeah, it, it would be great if we had, you know, 50 staff people that could spend eight hours a day just talking to you about your problem. Um, but really, there's a few of us. And if you've ever seen those guys at the park who are playing chess with 20 different people at the same time, that's us. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I came in on a Monday morning and there were 68 help tickets waiting for me. And so, you know, the efficiency factor means the email and the help desk format really helps me serve the most number of people in the quickest amount of time. And so I will grab one and respond to theirs, ask for more information because I always have to ask for more information. Uh, and then while you're getting that information, instead of twiddling my thumbs, I'm working on another guy's ticket and helping answer their question. And, 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 you know, I may have several open at the same time. Tim's got like 15 open at the same time. He's really great at that multitasking stuff. And so we can serve the greatest number of people in the least amount of time and have a much higher uh, support satisfaction rates when we do it this way. Um, occasionally you get somebody that their issue requires a special team viewer session because we need to go in and do something on their computer or they just 
it just doesn't type well and you just got to ask them a question by the phone. We do that when necessary, but uh, it, our most common and our standard format is via the email system with the, uh, the Zendesk help desk. Right. And um, okay. So, and then, so in the life cycle of a support ticket, what's the best thing anybody can do? So my, um, let me pick something that's solvable. My smart link isn't working like it should, or let's just say I'm having problems setting up my smart link or something like yeah. that. It doesn't really matter what it is. Mike game. That's your specialty. So talk yeah. about first, first I've been thing told is, I sound like crap on HF. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and it may just be your voice, but, uh, uh, most of the time it's, it's uh, it's, uh, somebody's got something misadjusted, but the first thing to do when you open the ticket is give me as much information as you possibly can. Tell me what model of radio you've got, what the serial number of the radio is, because the production date of the radio may have something to do with it. Tell me what version of software you're running. And if you say, I don't know, well, look on the shortcut in Windows that you click to open this thing, and it will tell you what version you're running. Or if the smart link is already, a smart SDR is already running, then you can go into the uh, radio setup part, and it will tell you what it is. That's important because if you're not running the latest software, I might spend, you know, two hours, three hours, four hours trying to solve an issue that was solved by the software engineers three months ago and you're still using old software. So, you know, tell me what software you're running. There may be specific bugs in that software that, that we can tell you about and, and encourage you to update. Um, tell me what version of windows you're using. Um, tell me just, you know, just as much information that when you click on that link to help open a ticket, there's a series of questions that it will ask you and they don't ask you those questions just because we want to waste your time that information can, is helpful and i apologize i can't make this any bigger but you'll notice that if i hover my mouse over top of a radio i've got two here this black screen pops up and um if i right click on that by the way see it says copy to clipboard and what that means is all that information that ken's asking for um, and I'll, okay, I'll, I'll paste it in a banner so you can see it actually, um, is incredibly helpful. My mouse is all over the place because, um, let me just uh, do something here. I'm going to, uh, so you guys can see it in, in speed. So notice when you hover your mouse over top, we get this black banner. That's a ton. You don't want to write down all of that information, right? It's a pain in the butt, but we've helped you. If you right click over something and it says copy to clipboard, and then I click on that, it's copied to clipboard and, Right there at the bottom, uh, ignore the first part about the mic settings that was left over from the first message, but it gives us the serial number of the radio. Uh, and for, uh, in case you want to know the first, this is no big secret. Ken, what are the first four digits? The first four digits is the production code. The first two are the week and the second two are the year. So right. that radio was produced in the fifth week of 2019. And it's a? It's a 6600. 60, 600. And the next line? Uh, max license version that uh, lets me know whether your radio is licensed for version two or version three, or whether you're only licensed to use the original version one software. Yeah, I don't even think version one has this pop up, so <laughs> I'd be surprised. Uh, that's right. Do, that's right. I've, and and uh, when do you need? Do you ever really need the radio ID? Uh, occasionally, if I'm helping somebody set up a reserved IP address or something for their radio, uh, I would need that. Um, okay. And also, that is your radio's unique identifier. So uh, right. it's like your serial number, but it's just another way to refer to the radio. Is it also the MAC address? That is the MAC address of your oh. hardware uh, IP. Net card. Uh, yeah. Net, net, net card. Yeah, right. Okay. And then the next number is pretty unique because it tells him that this is a... Yeah, that radio is being remoted. Uh, it's on a, it's a smart link IP radio. address. Yep. So yeah, it's on smart link. And then the radio, uh, why that that's is saying bug. internet not uh, available. That's a bug. And it is saying that that radio is set up to run firmware 3.3.32 and the dot eight two Oh three is really not important as far as I'm concerned, but for the software engineers, that's a number that they like to have. Right. The, uh, don't worry about the radio internet not available in this case. Uh, my internet's been up and down all day. I believe we checked the internet by, pinging a few things and that's what gives us that um 
ping is one of the last pieces of internet data that's managed. Um, it's a great tool for telling you if something's not there, maybe, or right. there, maybe, but it's not really a, a tool you can use for measuring anything. It's not an absolute. Other. Yeah, it's always just a handy tool. All right, so that's part one. I told you my radio is a, um, it's a 6600. I don't sound really good on sideband and uh, my buddies don't want to talk to me anymore. Um, I don't know. What would be the next thing? Well, you probably, I probably tried things, right? Yeah. Tell me what you've done. Uh, the important things would be, tell me what mic you're running, where it's connected, how it's connected, uh, what configuration you're using, you know, and, and, and better than words is a picture. If you can take a picture of that uh, radio control column on smart SDR that shows me where all your settings are, what mic profile you're using and things like that. And tell me, uh, tell me, do you have the bias turned on? Do you have the plus 20 DB mic preamp turned on, which is part of the uh, um, mic profile that you can get through uh, uh, the uh, settings dash radio setup dash phone CW. And it will tell you those things. Um, just tell me as much as you can about what your setup is, uh, where your mic gain is, where the, the level meter is reading, uh, what your transmit EQ and uh, bandwidth high-low cut are set up. Just anything that you would think that would be helpful for me to understand your situation, either tell me or show me. You know, um, I was going to bring this up. There are built-in snipping tools, but I find the Windows one pretty complicated to use. Um You've probably seen enough of my, you know, if you've watched the community or something, I always try to put a picture in because a picture's worth a thousand words. Absolutely. I use ScreenShot here because it's a great free screen capture tool and you can draw circles and pictures and text. And, um, I, you know, I paid for it because I was really happy with the stuff these guys are doing. It's also available for the Mac, not for free on the Mac world, but it is available. Um, and uh, taking a picture of... Uh, smart SDR tells so much of the story, right? You want to see everything. Absolutely. And when you do it, don't just zoom in on one little piece. Like, don't just show me your S meter and says, I'm not getting any signals. Show me the entire smart SDR screen so I can see how you've got that zoomed in, what your uh, axis uh, scale is so I can actually tell what that graphic is showing me uh, it, without the numbers on the side of the, uh, uh, the, the display, your display means nothing. Um, so show me that whole thing. And if you need to give me more information, then take another picture and zoom in on something. So okay. uh, for, for example, there's Mike, he's showing me that his pan adapter is zoomed in from about 130 up to about uh, 40 uh, or minus. He's 40 talking on here, on here, the, right. This this is incredibly important. We've had people who've done this and said, you know, my noise floor is really high. And you, and then they've just taken a picture of this. It's the scale here on the right that we really need. Yeah. And uh, Hey, Ken, how do you like that? That's my 40 meter noise floor. Oh, golly. I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I only get that kind of noise floor on my dummy load. I'm on your dummy load. Yeah. Uh, I probably have some preamps turned on. Maybe I don't. So there on the right, you can see on the uh, the right-hand column, you know, you can see the transmit equalization. You can see whether he's got DAX turned on while he's using the PC audio, which is a no-no usually, because uh, if you're using a PC mic, DAX will cut it off uh, and, and cause problems at least. Um, and then you can see what the meters are. And and if uh, if you think your transmitter is overdriving, for example, take a picture of that com that level meter while you're trying to transmit. Um, because I need to see what it's doing when you're actually talking. That can be a little tough to get timing right. Uh, you might have to try it a couple, three times, but uh, uh, you can do that. Or if you got a recorder, you can record a small video and send that in. And uh, if the video is too big for the email, store it in a Dropbox or OneDrive shared folder and send me the shared link. I can download it and look at the video. Google's really good at that, actually. If you share a large video, it just yep. sends us the link because it puts it in your free Google Drive. Yeah, Google well. Drive works. I don't use Google Drive a lot, but, uh, you know, yeah, if that's the way you do it, I can I can access it. So, uh, But it's really helpful to have pictures and videos of stuff that, is constantly changing. 
Um, again, the key is information. What information you don't provide me that I need to have, I'm just going to have to ask you and then wait for you to answer the questions again. And uh, that delays how long it takes to solve your your issues because I can't solve the problem if I don't really know what it is yet. Right. One of the things we can't really do, um, or we don't really do, I guess, is to help you set up your digital program, but we certainly do provide guidance and I try to do more of that in the community. But we may ask you for, you know, this picture and the picture of WSJT and the settings of WSJT or JTDX or whatever program you're using that shows the the other end of the audio world, the DAX world. So we have whole videos on setting up digital programs that hopefully will get you most of the way through it. Um, excellent. Well, that's um, so what you're really saying is tell the whole story, you know, tell like you're explaining it to the cat or your grandma. Yeah. To the cat, especially because the cat won't understand it. So you have to use really plain English. Other things, when you're typing your descriptions out, please use complete sentences and don't run them all together. Like you're trying to save time by not punctuating and, and putting it all in one great big block of text. You know, that return key is a wonderful way to separate <laughs> thoughts and ideas. Uh, and, and please don't use all caps, no matter how mad you are, it will not speed things up. All it does, it makes it harder for me to read. And it is also kind of known as shouting in internet speak. So, uh, you know, type it so that, you understand that somebody's going to have to actually read it. Um, it's amazing how many run on sentences I have to decipher because people are in a hurry and don't want to use the return key to separate their thoughts and stuff. And uh, it's a whole lot easier when you, when you format things. Or they're just old RTTY operators. <laughs> right. Yeah. Unshift on space, right? Unshift uh, on space. Uh, you'll have to be an old fart like us to understand that one, or at least carried a Model 15 into your ham shack by yourself, which probably weighed about 75 or 90 pounds without the table. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I remember those never. days. Um, anything else you want to add? Uh, we, we've gone through a few things. Uh, we've got online resources available. We've got us available uh we um month oh what are mondays like <laughs> oh mondays are a big oh, no, on the weekday. <laughs> yeah we, you know people play on the weekend and break their radios or whatever and 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 the, the other thing that we run into a lot of if people just say you know my radio's not working right i want to send it in and then they grouse at us because we ask them to do things like please do this factory reset so you already did a reset well we need to make sure you did it right because if you didn't do it right, it didn't work right. So we do need to do that. Uh, and, uh, you know, tell us what you've done to try to solve the problem. Tell us what the radio is doing that it's not supposed to or what it's not doing that you think it should be uh, to do that. Yeah. And, and the other thing that's really helpful for me is that when I ask you to do something, please do it. Uh, and if I <laughs> give like you five, three steps, please do all three of them. Don't do the first one and said, well, it's still not working. Because, you know, and I usually always number them one, two, three, four. And if I give you several instructions, please read all of them and please do them all. You did touch on a point, and I know we're joking a little bit. We're actually serious, but it's not uncommon for someone to ask you to do something or a customer to try something. And we get back another email and, and we know, and I know what's happened is you've done all those, but something didn't change, but you didn't say I did all your steps, but we're no further ahead which is really critical to anchor us to where you're at. Often, Ken, when we come to questions, you know, because we see everything, right? And that's good and bad for us. We give us a lot of experience, but that's sort of the one versus many thing. So it's not uncommon to um, ask you what's a trivial question is, but we actually have to start at the beginning of the most common denominator. A lot of our cases, and I mean a huge percentage, probably north of the 80%, are, um, and I don't want to say user error, but uh, user caused. And we want to help you understand why it did or didn't work. And that's why Absolutely. some of the first steps in this are so painful, uh, <laughs> probably for both of us. But it's just to make sure you didn't, you know, that it's not a configuration issue. RFI is a great one. Um, or have no power out when digital modes is a great one. 99% of those are user uh, error. And it's just because we, we you, it's new to you, right? You're still learning. And yeah. you yeah. can go we through ham radio. You can go through ham radio forever going, uh, oh, the greatest one, by the way, is 
and this has nothing to do with us. It's a WSJT one. I should be decoding more signals. And this is a bug. I'm going to call this a, a, or a feature in WSJT. The first time you install WSJT, the pan adapter that it pops up with it is half the width it needs to be. And yep. it's the right, the bins per pixel setting, which comes up at two. And it really should come up at five. Right. So that you get from zero to three kilohertz or so. And a lot of times it won't decode what's not actually showing on their pan adapter. But uh, yeah, anyway. and, and going back to what you said, there are sometimes we have to ask some painfully obvious questions because when your radio is not working, it's really easy to forget to try some of the painfully obvious things. And so we have to ask things like, is your radio plugged in? Is your power supply turned on? Is your microphone connected? Uh, and, you know, it's not that we think you're stupid. It's just we just want to make sure we haven't forgotten something that is painfully obvious. Uh, I've actually had tickets where people said my radio weren't turned on. It, it won't turn on. And, and lo and behold, one of the connections to the power supply was not connected properly and it wouldn't boot. And uh, so we have to ask those questions. And and when you when you email in, I have no idea what level of experience you are. So uh, I have to start at the basics. You know, we're we're just about done here. But one of the most famous ones I've had. There's two of them. Uh, but the one I spent about three hours on the phone with a customer in my early days. I he called. He couldn't get sideband working. He had no mic out. He had a 6400M. And he was using a hand mic. I always ask people to go back to the hand mic if I'm doing that because it's, you know, it should work. I think I've seen one broken one in a couple of years. And, okay, do this. Yeah, do that. And I can't see what he's doing. So it's a, it's a lot of questions. And I finally said, I, I kid you not, it was three hours. I said, do you sure you have the mic plugged in? Uh, oh, yeah, it's plugged in the back. I said, okay, well, can you tell me which one you've got it plugged in the back? And it's silly obvious question he goes oh it's in the mic connector i said can you actually look at the back for me and just see where it's plugged in no no it's in the mic connector no i really want you to look at the back oh i gotta pull the radio yeah well we might need to do that um so he pulls the radio and he goes oh my god it's plugged into the speaker connector <laughs> three hours so yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's uh if you've worked in a support organization you understand those questions so yeah can Anything you want to add today? Our job is to help you enjoy your hobby and enjoy your radio. And, you know, that's my that's my goal. I'm happy when you're happy. It's, uh, it's our company motto, isn't it? Ab absolutely. You know, it one of our is. one of our purposes of the of the business is to enhance life. Uh, and I guess the bottom line is I can help do that if you help me. So when you open up a ticket, help me out and uh, give me all the information and and please uh, you know work with me and we will solve your problems as much as we can okay. so uh flex radio Kenan, is a wonderful radio enjoy it if somebody wants to talk ham radio with you how do they get hold of you and i'm not talking about flex radio support but they just want to uh are you is your email address on qrz uh or uh, uh or, or we got you hidden hidden enough <laughs> I think one of them still is accurate, but, uh, okay. yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah, but please, if you just want to talk ham radio, you know, I can do that. Um, but, uh, I'd like to keep my, my work and my personal ham radio hobby separate. So, uh, if you got flex radio questions, you know, leave them for the help tech tickets. It, it's, it, and it's a credit to yourself that even working in ham radio all day, you still play with the hobby because it's not uncommon to go do something else. As oh a yeah. Well, I've been What's at it. Uh, depends on what year it is. Um, right now, I'm doing a lot of FT8 because my antennas stink, and uh, I'm I'm trying to boost my compromise uh, profiles. Yeah, they're yeah they're uh, they're compromise antennas. They actually, you know what? Stinks. <laughs> Based on a survey, I'm running. Eighty percent of us are running compromised antennas, but having fun using FT8 and making you know whatever your goal is so congratulations to you. and flex so, is one of the easiest radios to do any of those digital modes on so uh, one you know, of the I've, best really it is it is fun so all right ken well thanks yeah. for joining us today everybody else thanks for joining the qso today qso today expo uh and i said here in august or sorry september 2022 we are recording this in mid-august uh 
uh, and uh, it's wonderful. Uh, they're great hosts, uh, great event. And uh, again, thanks for uh, having a lesson. 73. Catch you later. Have fun, everybody.